please introduce yourself to the fans real quick, like uh, who you are, where you're from, and maybe like a fun fact about yourself. Okay, so uh, I'm Penelope Pavlopoulou. I am from Athens, Greece, and a fun fact about me is that uh, I'm a cat mom. <laughs> you're a cat mom. Of course I would say that. <laughs> of course. That's all I talk about <coughs> lately. Okay, how many cats do you have? Just one for now. <laughs> was there a time one. when you had more? No, no, I only when I was a when I was a kid, but it wasn't. We we had a cat, but it was in the in the field, you know, mm -hmm. feeding her. She wasn't coming in the house, you know. Okay, now let's switch back to basketball. Uh, can you tell us when and where you got familiar with the sport and when you started playing? I started from a very young age playing a, at school with uh, the boys. I was eight years old or maybe seven. Mm -hmm. And I tried a lot of sports growing up because uh, I was an athletic kid and a, a very energetic one. And our parents, with, along with my brother, uh, pushed us to get involved with, with sports. So I started playing, uh, like I said, at school. And I realized that I'm good at it and uh, I'm beating the boys. and. Uh, <laughs> I can score threes, which for that age was rare. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, let's try. Let's uh, let's have me signed up in a, on, a, on an academy in the, in Athens, and uh, the rest is history. Uh, you you said that you tried some other sports too. What were those? I did everything from swimming to horse riding to tennis to. Um, judo to ballet, um, a little bit of track. My favorite one was so uh, football, soccer. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't as uh, stigmatized for uh, girls back then, I think I would have followed it. But uh, I'm glad I found basketball in a way. <laughs> so why did you choose basketball out of all these, if not soccer? Mm -hmm. um, at the time, I didn't know why, but it was just pulling me more. It was I was enjoying it a lot more because uh, it was uh, it's it's a team sport. Mm -hmm. You share the ball. You you take shot. It's a beautiful sport. There is uh, baskets here and then. It's not it's not like soccer where you play the whole game and maybe no team scores. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a, a lot more interesting to me, and I realized over the years that it has a, to do it has a lot to do with and mind, the, the mind and, uh, you know, thinking and strategy. So I, it just attracted me a lot more than the, all the other sports. And like I said, I was also good at it uh, at, at that mm -hmm. age. And I was just enjoying it. It, it was always a game for me. I was playing, you know, with the, with the definition of the, of the word, play mm -hmm. a game. I was having fun. When did you decide that you wanted to go pro, like that, that you wanted to do with this seriously on a competitive level? Mm -hmm. When I was 14 years old, I started uh, being more involved with it, uh, with uh, you know playing in the national teams during the summer, and instead of going for vacation, I was staying in Athens to practice more, uh, to work out, but. St I, up until the, my, my last year in college, uh, actually after, right after I graduated, uh, until then it was still a lifestyle, it was still a game, it was still a choice that I wasn't even making, it was just coming natural to me. Mm -hmm. um, and after college, I had to make a decision about my life. In fact, I, was, I had already signed with a big tech company in the, in America and I was supposed to stay to live there and work and quit basketball uh, and I was very happy for it actually not happy I was very excited for it because I thought I had uh, achieved my my goals as a mm -hmm. as a human being uh, professionally but as soon as uh, the season in uh, the collegiate level stopped for me it was a month or two of I don't want to call it depression, but I was very, I was devastated that I was not able to go mm -hmm. uh, practice, to see my friends on the court, to work out for a goal for the next season. 
and mm -hmm. that's when I realized that you know I want to continue playing I withdrew from that uh, from that job I returned to Greece and there then I said okay let's take it year by year and see how you feel mm -hmm. how you like it and I'm still playing <laughs> Uh, can you walk us through your professional career so far? Like what teams you played for, what achievements mm -hmm. you had with them on a club level? Yep, so before I left for the US, I was playing in, the, in Athens in the Proteas Bulas. Uh, that was my first big achievement in the team, uh, in the team aspect. Um, we had a Greek Cup coming from the second division. When the, on the youth level, we had the a Greek Championship, national championship, and that was that was incredible. You know, because that at that age, you just play with your friends, mm -hmm. um, and we celebrated accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after that, I went. I left for the states. I was playing for Washington State University. You know, in the, in the NCAA, in the Pac-12, uh, very competitive league um, conference. Mm -hmm. After that, I came back to Athens in Greece, played for Olympiacos. We was it was the first time that we qualified in the in the Euroleague, and that was actually the first time that I played against the Shopron here. Mm -hmm. And I was 22, 22 years old. I was only watching the team. Um, and the players, and then I got to face them on the court. So it was kind of a shock for me in a positive way. Um, big moments for young Penelope. <laughs> uh, we had a, I stayed for, with Olympiacos for two years. We had two Greek Cups and a championship, then it was COVID, so everything stopped. I left. I uh, played abroad in uh, Romania for Sepsi. We played mm -hmm. in the qualifiers of EuroLeague, ended up in EuroCup. There we finished in the, in the quarterfinals of EuroCup. Well, that was a tough season. Also had Cup and uh, Championship. Uh, that was a tough season with uh, everything being closed. You know, it, it was hard for everybody. You mm -hmm. had to stay healthy. We were avoiding uh, all kinds of contacts with uh, the rest of the world, basically. Yeah. Um, I, after that year, I went to Thessaloniki to play for Pauk, and I left halfway through the season for Gdynia in Poland uh, to play again in, a, in Euroleague, in the, the Polish uh, league. Um, and next was Panathinaikos in my, in my list, which was a which I live big moments with mm -hmm. in, the, in the club because uh, I don't know if you watched any videos from uh, the from from these games, but the fans there are crazy. Oh, they yes. always fill the gym. Oh, yes. They were always uh, supporting us. So for um, a woman, for for women's basketball, this is a uh, huge in uh, in mm -hmm. Greece. Uh, and after that, I came here. So proud. So to summarize, you played for Olympiakos, Panathinaikos, and Pauk, like right. three great clubs in Greece. Like, wasn't it like weird to, right. to go from one to the other? It was weird for me. Um, I tried to prepare myself a lot for it because uh, um, I wanted to honor each club that I played for, and mm -hmm. I think that I did that to the best of uh, my abilities. It's not something that it's very common to do for athletes. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, there is some, uh, sometimes some stigma to it. There is some uh, guilt that is put on you mm -hmm. from uh, various, uh, um, from various, you know, people, ways, etc. So that had to do a lot of a uh, mental, mental preparation before doing before taking these steps uh, but I'm actually proud of it and I think it has uh, helped me get where I am now and where you are now is right here in Chopron how did this offer come for you how did you get in touch with the club so at first when my agent told me that 
you know, I am talking, I have been talking with Sopram and uh, we have actually, we're actually having advanced talks. So uh, I'm telling you now, there is probably going to be an offer coming to you in the next two, three days. Uh, so prepare yourself for it. Mm-hmm. I was like, I cannot believe it. I was like, you're joking to me. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, my mind was set that I, I would uh, stay in, uh, in Greece. I was the captain of uh, Panathinaikos as well. And I, I'm hard with changes. Mm-hmm. I need a little bit of time to adjust. Um, but I was, I cannot believe it because I've been watching Sopron play since I was, I don't know, 16, 17 years old. Because all oh. these, uh, it was actually uh, Alexandra Tervendakis, if I'm saying her mm-hmm. name right. Yeah. Uh, we're in the same age mm-hmm. and we would always play against each other in the European uh, level, uh, European competitions, youth level. Mm-hmm. and. I was so intrigued, so um, it was a shock for me when I realized that, you know, she transitioned, she got an offer very early in her, in the, her basketball career, mm-hmm. she was very young for it, when she got an offer from uh, Sopran, I was like, wow, there's actually this way <laughs> of playing oh. basketball, I didn't even know at the time how <laughs> professional basketball looks like, you know, and mm-hmm. she, watching her, um, and her progress over the years, I was admiring what, whatever she did. And even though we're not playing the same position, we were just, I could only feel the closeness because we were, I knew her, mm-hmm. because we were playing against each other for years. And then I saw how she took this huge jump in her career and had really advanced her game. And so I wanted to watch how she was doing that. And that's how I was watching these games. She didn't mm-hmm. even know that. <laughs> Um, so I, there was nothing, really nothing to think about when I heard the name Sopron. I was like, okay, to my agent, take care of this. I still have games going on. Tell them yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest will be going to figure it out. Um, what are your goals with our team now? My goals, personal goals is to really every day take it step by step, step, uh, practice by practice, to be better and to be good for this team, to be, uh, to provide whatever I can, to, have, whether it's hustle plays, whether it's creation, whether it's a uh, defense, whether it's um, just, you know, clapping, <laughs> anything. Mm-hmm. I want this, I want us to be very successful and the, the the goals as a team is obviously go as far as we can in, in EuroCup and I think that this team has the potential to do it uh, and hopefully bring back the, the glory days of, uh, of this team with, um, I don't know, it's, it's big goals and uh, I know there's very good teams in the, mm-hmm. this league but I want us to be champions, cup winners, everything. I want to win it all. With um, <clears throat> what do you think is that extra, that plus that you can bring to the team? I believe that I'm a good asset for the team because uh, I'm, I'm like a, a glue to mm-hmm. the, to the, to the team. Uh, so I think that I'm a good uh, team player, and I it doesn't have to be me scoring like 20 points. It doesn't have to be me assisting 10 uh, with 10 passes or grabbing eight rebounds, I don't know, whatever, or grabbing five steals, collecting five steals, whatever. Um, it's just that I can facilitate the, facilitate the, the game that mm-hmm. we want to play. And I think that's important. Who is Penelope Pavlopoulou off the court? What do you do when you're not dealing with basketball? Okay, so what I do, I usually, when I'm, when I'm at home, I enjoy seeing my friends and hanging out with them. Uh, when I'm here, I also, we also hang out with the girls, we go for coffees, for brunches. I very much enjoy taking walks and uh, just looking at, the, at all this beautiful nature around here. Uh, especially now at this period of time with all the different colors, it's just incredible to see. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So like doing that, I obviously spend some time with my cat. <laughs> Other things that I do, I like learning things. Uh, I'm currently also attending a program from, uh, from FIBA, which has mm -hmm. a little bit of studying. It's called the FIBA timeout. And mm -hmm. that's very interesting to me because a lot of players from uh, the top level, elite players, uh, are gathered in this group and we're all together learning about business in sports and management and organization. Uh, it's nice meet, meeting these people mm -hmm. and talking with them and sharing all of our experiences. Um, yeah, talk on the phone with my family, with my friends. That's how usually the days pass by. I also enjoy watching basketball, mm -hmm. uh, mostly men's Euro league. <laughs> Um, yeah, don't ask for my favorite team. <laughs> <laughs>